Greetings to you, the beloved of Highland Congregational Church. For all that are with us today, I extend and express the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ to you, and I remind you that in pass, as you pass it on, you may be a lifeline for someone who is in desperate need of hearing a good word from someone. And so I invite you to call somebody both today as well as this week, extending that same peace to them. Again, reminding that music is on YouTube under Pastor Louis Leon and uh, having contributions from John Kennedy, Emil, uh, Emily Marzullo, and Stephen Cardoza as well. So uh, be apprised of those that are still available to you. Now, let us be called into the celebration of the worship of God, celebration in faith, a celebration of life. And I read to you out of the prophet Samuel. And this is Samuel's calling as a young boy. And it is his third calling in the night. And hear this blessed word as is our calling. Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that would make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. May this blessed word lead us into our worship of God this day. Thanks be to God and amen. Now, I know that some of you are starting to venture out of your sheltering a little bit at a time, which I believe is important. We have to still be cautious, even though at times we think that things have passed. Just this past week, uh, I heard from someone who shared that they thought that their relative had been exposed and then they themselves had ex been exposed in, the, in a day and also then had exposed others, and of which I was possibly close. And so uh, we know that it's not just disappeared. It's something that we have to take heed. But again, as we each of us ventures out a little more and a little more, we realize that we're coming out of sheltering and isolation, and we have a freedom uh, to come out of that sheltering, each of us can make our choice at any time. And, but when we move from isolation, what I want to remind us is that we're moving out of that kind of consciousness of being alone to that now of a conscious of being beyond ourselves, which I think is very vital and important to realize. This transition is getting back out into the world again. And we have to move from having first cared for ourselves as we've been alone, some of you I know for now not just weeks but months, uh, and now thinking of others as we go out. And of course, one of the things we're still hearing how important masks are. And uh, we're doing that on behalf of others, really. It's not just protection for ourselves, but protecting another person. And when we have sheltered, we were not just sheltering to protect ourselves, we in another way are sheltering to protect others so that we do not get infected and then pass it on. So we go beyond ourselves and we are free to let go of those things of the past and now to embrace that which is before us. Now, some years ago, I know many of you were familiar with an old movie called City Slickers. And uh, there was a particular character that I think everybody loved. His name was Curly. And in the beginning of the film, he shared with the lead persons of saying to them, there is one thing that is the meaning of life. And they were bewildered. And in about, basically, he in essence said to them, you have to decide what that one thing is, each of us. Now, it's one thing to have that perception, but it's another for us to take hold of that as well to let go maybe of other things and take hold of what we believe and what we think and what we value as most important. And so today, that's what we're beginning to understand, especially as Jesus with his disciples and especially Peter wanted them to be able to focus on their 
understanding of following Jesus. Now I'm reading to you about Jesus' conversation with Peter and with other disciples, taken from the Gospel according to Matthew in the 16th chapter, verses 24 through 26. And let us hear this blessed word. It said, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any would, would come out and anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a person if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? May this blessed word truly speak to each of us in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Letting go of things in the world, maybe things that we have had with us throughout our lives, and taking hold of what is most important is what Jesus is saying to his disciples. Now, sometimes it's experienced just in a moment. There's a story that I came across of years ago, Anuja Baniya from Narnan, Nepal. And the story is, goes that uh, she happened to find cash and diamonds that were valued at $130,000. Now, they happened to have belonged to a 65-year-old man, Mr. Pudel of Kathmandu. And she was able to communicate the authorities, and he was able to contact her, and she returned those values. And she rejected a $5,000 reward from him. And she was not well off. I'm sure that could have done many things, but her value was that it belonged to him and it was important to return to him. Later, even she rejected a beautiful diamond necklace that he offered to her. And what we recognize is she took hold of what she most valued in her faith of doing the right thing for someone else, thinking beyond herself. She let, it, let go of what might have benefited her to take hold of what would benefit another. Well, denying ourselves, Jesus saying, uh, can mean many things for us today. But I think what's most important is to realize that it's not just denying ourselves of things that we want or wish, but sometimes maybe of little habits that we might have absorbed into our life, especially if we've been alone for as long as some of you have. Uh, St. Augustine, the theologian, once said, habit, if not resisted, soon becomes necessity. And we realize that, that once we absorb something and once we begin to follow in that pattern, it becomes a part of our identity of who we are. Well, again, because of hopefully beginning slowly to come out of this sheltering where we have protected ourselves from health, basic survival. We have unconsciously at times turned inward and we've been thinking mostly of ourselves every day. Now we have to be careful that we don't get stuck on the self, that we're not to just in the self-preservation mode. Jesus said, take up your cross, meaning Take hold of what it means to follow me, to be a part of. And it also can mean getting beyond taking care of just me. That's the key, I think, that happen is important for us today. Deny in ourselves, which is getting beyond the just me. Now, I think of that every time, every once in a while on television, someone is interviewed who is not wearing a mask anywhere in the country. And many of them have said, I live in a free country, don't have to. And I remember saying to myself as hearing that the first time, saying, yes, but that means that you're saying that you're free to not care about others that you would be protecting, it's particularly those most vulnerable. And so that's the thing we have to be aware of, is that sometimes we become unconscious about what we do to just protect ourselves. We have to ask ourselves always, uh, what have we taken hold of in our life that maybe needs to be substituted with what Christ is offering us? Now, someone once wrote saying that the habit of the self is habits are at first cobwebs and then cables. 
Think of that for a moment. The power, the, the strength of something that has taken hold of us when at first we had some decisions about it. Well, it's not just, I'm not talking about things like habits of when we wake or when we go to bed or how we, what we eat or don't eat. Talking about our perceptions of habit of how we view people. Habits of that we see ourselves first. That's what Jesus was concerned with, with his disciples. So as he was attempting for his disciples to become unstuck, he wanted them to take hold of a life following him. And there they would find life. I think we've all maybe discovered that to some degree in our living. And it's important because we realize that habits and I use that term again and again here because it becomes that which is most unconscious. In fact, Miguel de Unamund said, to fall into a habit is to begin to cease to be. A philosophical thing that if we fall into habit, we cease to be ourselves. We then just become what patterns we've established. Now, Frank Clark also wrote, he said, a habit is something you can do without thinking, which is why most of us have so many. I want us to be conscious of that, that what Jesus is calling us to in this scripture that I read here this morning, as he was speaking to his disciples, for us to realize that to become conscious of Jesus, of his bidding, his calling, take the cross and follow me, is to go beyond ourselves on any given day in any given moment. And as some of you begin to be venturing out a little bit, you know that there's always that chance that we're going to come across someone where we might be thinking and thoughtful about them, their needs, their concern as well. So that's where we take up our cross, taking hold of life as Christ has given it to us, of where we see ourselves living on behalf of others, the self-sacrifices, the self-sharing that we do, that we give. And I want us to remind, be reminded that in this July, as I in the past weeks have been speaking on freedom, today I talk about the freedom of letting go, the freedom to let go of some things that maybe we've absorbed into our lives to take hold of what Jesus lays before us. Take the cross and follow me, Jesus says. As someone once wrote, his author is unknown, but I thought it was important. It says, giving up things doesn't always mean we are weak. Sometimes it means we're strong enough to let go. And that's where we're called in Jesus, to let go of those things that limit us in our perspective, only thinking of ourselves, and now going out into the world once again and realizing that we are called to live on behalf of Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus was reminding his disciples in a way to follow him. And so I invite you now with these thoughts, please join with me in prayer. Let us pray. Most blessed, gracious, and merciful God, we offer our thankful hearts today before you, realizing that we ourselves have been safe, spared from not just infections, but more importantly, spared from the difficulties that disease could bring upon our lives and our families. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we have been blessed, that we turn those blessings outward to share of ourselves in a way, that to be reminded that our calling is to be your followers and to share a good news by what we do and how we live with others around and about us. Now, as we step from our doors, little by little, Help us to be mindful again of your love, your care for us as we pray these things in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now hear these words. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace both now and in the life everlasting. Amen.